I just got the idea to make like one card that can act as like several different ones because I read it was like it acts like your library card, like your adventure card. It can also act as your like IDs. Like, what inspired that idea to make all those cards one thing? Yes. Yeah, so we came. So the city key, the municipal ID card, actually came from community act activists and community mm -hmm. advocates. If you talk to the community advocates, they'll tell you they've been working on this for ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a while. And city council and the mayor's office in 2016's budget decided to put a million dollars towards this program. Mm -hmm. So other cities like New York City and San Francisco had started a municipal ID card. So the original thought from the community advocates point of view were there are a lot of homeless and veterans and seniors, undocumented, entry community, many vulnerable populations, LGBTQ, um, that had a hard time getting a state ID or driver's license. Mm -hmm. So you, when you need a state ID or driver's license, you need multiple documents or maybe pay 20 or 30. So mm -hmm. it could have been the fee, the documents, accessibility that they couldn't get it. And so what we originally wanted to do when we started this whole process was create a card for these individuals. Mm -hmm. um, when we, so when we got into office in 2017, the first two months we had 50 roundtables mm -hmm. with different community groups to just say, okay, if we are going to make this card, what are people looking for? What do they need? What do they want? And we wanted to make a card that people were going to be using. And so even um, as we did this research, we were like, wow, this is you know much bigger than we thought, like hearing people. And someone said, we don't want this card, just another card in your wallet. Right. You know, So we don't want it just a government ID. They want it to be multifaceted. And so that really came from the community group. So we decided to make it a library card, a CTA card, a medical ID card, mm -hmm. um, the first uh, government ID that you can self-identify your gender um, in the state of Illinois. So you can pick L um, you can pick non-binary, male, female, or leave it completely blank. Mm -hmm. It also was a prescription discount card, and that that idea came from Michelle Garcia, mm -hmm. who's an advocate at Access Living that advocates for a lot of. Um, people with disabilities, mm -hmm. communities with pe people with disabilities had asked if we could do a prescription discount card mm -hmm. um, because they found in New York City that there were a lot of savings that people were able to see by having a prescription discount card. So all of that came together really from the community perspective and this is something I'm really proud of because we created these policies hand in hand with the communities mm -hmm. that really wanted it. And I'll give you an example, yesterday I was at um, a senior center in South Shore and there was a senior, um, uh, I would say a young man, but older gentleman, mm -hmm. who came up to me and he had all these documents. He's like, I need an ID. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to look on my website and go through the document guide. And all he had was a um, ID card that was for senior citizens that you can get from the city of Chicago. He had a high school transcript from 1964. I know. And he had a lease from his senior building. And so through those documents, we were able to get him an ID today. That was and that was for me running into him yesterday, but he needed an ID and we got it for him today. And, you know, because he couldn't get his social security card, he couldn't get his driver's license or state ID, he couldn't get access to banking, he couldn't get access to the things he needed because he lacked an ID. So that's why it's so important to help, you know, people like Mr. Harward, but also when you create this ID that has a multifaceted purposes, it allows people of privilege like myself who have an ID mm -hmm. to help those folks blend in. So it doesn't become a stigma or it doesn't become a card just for vulnerable populations. It becomes a card for all Chicagoans. That's good. That's great. Okay, uh, my next question is like, like, how do you think this car will help people? Like, what are the benefits of having it? Like, I know you said, like, um, it can help, like, get things like game banking and stuff, but, like, other, like, benefits that you have, like, longer term or for other people or, like, people who may have an idea already, what are benefits of them switching to get this car and stay? Great, great question. That was, like, the big driver of, like, okay, so how do we get other people to sign up? So we started asking that question. Okay, if you have a state ID or you have a driver's license, what would make you want to get the ID card? Mm -hmm. You know, so they said, like, keep it low cost. So the ID card only costs $5 if you are 18 and under, $10 if you're 18 to 64, and for seniors 65 and over, it's free. Mm -hmm. Right now, all of our ID cards are free until we hit $100,000. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like their promotion. Mm -hmm. But um, after that, you'll have to pay. So we kept the cost lower than the state ID or driver's license. 
Second, we heard we would love to get discounts at some of the places that Chicagoans love to go. So we were able to get a free day at the Field Museum. Mm -hmm. We were able to get 50% off uh, tickets at the Goodman Theater, 10% off the Joffrey Ballet, mm -hmm. uh, 10% at Uncle Rem Remus's Chicken on the West Side, mm -hmm. with AMC Movie Theaters, $10 movie tickets for adults, $8 for students. Mm -hmm. So there's another benefit and discount that you guys could take advantage of. Also with all the different restaurants, the Field Museum, and hopefully other museums coming on soon. For young people, it serves as, you know, government ID, transportation card, library card. It's a one card, so you don't have to carry multiple. And for teenagers or young people, I notice sometimes they may lose things, I lose things too. But by having one card and all of it, card, to get a new one. yeah, so with one card, you don't, you don't have to keep track of all these other multiple cards. Also the discounts, who doesn't want a discount? I want a discount, and I'm not even a young person. <laughs> so who doesn't want to get $8 movie tickets? And lastly, I think if you don't drive and you don't have a state ID, I think it's very important to have ID to say who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you never know, um, you know, where you're going to be or where you need to get access to. And so having an ID to say who you are is important too. It also has an emergency contact number on it. Oh. So you can put, you know, your parent or your guardian and a phone number on it in case, you know, it gets lost or in case something happens to you as well. So I think it's always important to carry identification on you, at, you know, being a young person, but also you can take care of all the, take um, advantage of all the discounts that comes with it. Great. So what makes getting this card easier than getting like a government ID? So that's another good question. So the state ID, your driver's license, you need very certain documents to be able to get that. Like your passport, your social security card, your birth certificate. Mm -hmm. We found by doing a lot of our roundtables and when we did our community group meetings that a lot of people had a hard time getting access to just those documents. So we wanted to make it very expansive. Mm -hmm. So our document guide allows, it's like three or four pages of different, different documents you can use. Um, the goal is to get three points. You have to prove residency and identity to be able to get the ID card. Mm -hmm. So that could be like a high school transcript, maybe not from 1964, but mm -hmm. a high school transcript. It could be a high school ID. Mm -hmm. It could be a medical ID. Um, it could be like there are when people are leaving our jail system here in Cook County, mm -hmm. you leave with a Department of Corrections card. It could be something like that. Um, if you're homeless, it could be a letter from the nonprofit saying like you live there to prove residency. Um, so there's many different documents, um, veterans forms, uh, utility bill, all different documents that you can use to prove residency and identity. So that's why it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. Plus, we actually go out to the community. We have a mobile printing site. Mm -hmm. So we have a mobile printer that goes to all different communities. Uh, we were, were at community colleges. We were at a high school on the south side yesterday. Um, we are in park facilities. We're at all different places throughout the city. Mm -hmm. And the card prints on site. So within like 10 minutes, you can get your ID card printed and take it with you. If you go to the secretary's office, Secretary White, and you get a state ID or driver's license, it has to be mailed to you. Um, so this kind of takes that stuff out. Uh, so how does one like apply to get this card? Because I know you say they have like the mobile spots or like yes. where else can you go? And like when you get there, how exactly do you apply? To the get process? Card? Okay, so you go to my website, shycityclerk.com. Mm -hmm. Again, that's shycityclerk.com. And you can go, you got it? Okay, good. So you can go to my website and you can go look at City Key mm -hmm. and it'll have a mobile, like a calendar for, it should be, the March calendar should be up soon. Mm -hmm. And you can see the dates that we're going to be around the neighborhood. So you can see we have, I think, three Saturdays that will mm -hmm. be hosting City Key events on Saturdays. And we also try to do once a month evening hours to allow people to work around their school schedule yeah. or their work schedule. Um, second, um, any of those locations, you can walk in, get an application. It takes like a few minutes to fill out the application. Um, my team will just look through the materials. We give your application back to you. Then you get in the chair, take your photo, and a prints. Oh. That easy. And if you want to come downtown, we do offer city hall appointments by appointment only. Mm -hmm. And those are our city halls. So we try to do appointment only and walk-ins as well. But we do recommend checking out our document guide mm -hmm. on our website at shycityclerk.com mm -hmm. first before you come. You can also print your application from the website. Mm -hmm. And if you want to host your own like your own city key event, mm -hmm. you can actually apply online and pick your dates that you would like us to come out in April or May and we can come out to your neighborhood and do a city key event. Oh, that's really awesome. Or your school. Oh, that's really awesome. Thank you. Um, I was like, my life was just like, do you think this car might just be essentially better than just having a regular state ID? You know, I think for a lot of people, it, it just depends what you, what you need. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, if you drive, you need a driver's license. But if you 
you know, are growing up and you just take the transit all the time, you may not need a driver's license. No. Uh, if you fly, if you're flying, you'd still need a state ID or a passport. It doesn't work on like TSA mm -hmm. flying. But if you're using your everyday life, you could use a city key. You know, you can use it to get into buildings, you can use it to get into your school, you can use it as a transportation card, um, access through our banking partners. So I think, yeah, it may be an alternative for some, um, or you could, you know, have both, why not? It's free right now, so you might as well get both. Might as well. <laughs>